Reboot your biblical perspective. This is episode number four of Reboot your biblical yes, perspective. Coming to you live from the Twin Island Republic of Grand Tobago. Zane K. Kutcher International, authors and master coaches of the Pneumatology of Christ. Welcome to episode four of Reboot your biblical perspective. And co hosting with me, as per usual, is it's the lovely. Katsura. <laughs> hey guys, so it's a pleasure to be on here today. Episode 4, we're looking forward to sharing with you some more interesting insight into the book of John. Some things that you probably never even considered. If you have not checked out our other episodes, you can check them out. We covered some really cool perspec- um, topics. He brought in the perspective, what is light and darkness, just to give an example, what it is to be born of God. So you don't want to miss this out. You can also check out our Patreon link, which we will post in the comment section so that you guys can see what's available. These podcasts will be available on Patreon for our Patreons. So Zane, let's dive. Exactly. <laughs> let's dive straight into this. Yeah. We are reading from the book of John chapter 1. For those of you who are joining us, and we're going to start with verse 14. Would you like me to go ahead and read? Yes, go right ahead and read and, and we jump into it. All right, awesome. So for those of you who are following, we're using the amplified version. Of course, you can use whichever version you're comfortable with and it says and the word christ became flesh and lived among us and we actually saw his glory glory as belongs to the one and only begotten son of the father the son who is truly unique the truly one of his kind who is full of grace and truth absolutely free of deception john testified repeatedly about him and has cried out testifying officially for the record with validity and relevance. This was he of whom I said, he who comes after me has a higher rank than I and has priority over me, for he existed before me. For out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing, favor upon favor, and gift heaped upon gift. For the law was given through Moses, but grace, the unearned, undeserved favor of God and truth came through Christ Jesus. No one has seen God, his essence, his divine nature at any time. The one and only begotten God, that is the unique son, who is in the intimate presence of the father he has explained him and interpreted and revealed the awesome wonder of the father so we're going back to verse number 14 and it says and the word became flesh boom and the word became 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 flesh. flesh Yes, Ian. Tell me some more. <laughs> All right. So, as we covered in the previous episodes, or the pre- yeah, the previous episodes of this of this series, we found that 
as we said, a lot of people actually read the scriptures and read, when I say read scriptures, they read the Bible generally. And within the Western community, the Western church community, Western Christian church community, um, very little is really understood of the interconnection of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And so many read the New Testament, uh, unless you're a theologian, you re usually read the New Testament independent of the rest of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And in doing and in doing that, it leaves a lot of room for assumptions. Right. A lot of room for you to come come to your own understanding or come to your own assumptions or presumptions as to what this could mean. Right? And um, as we covered in the previous episodes, we showed how things like the word, God and the word, um, the, the world, all of these things have been misunderstood because of a lack of a holistic perspective of what this is. Right, so when, when, when it comes to the word made flesh, it's pretty much the same thing. Because people actually, and, and, and theologians have actually dived into this, but dived into this outside of the actual ancient Hebrew perspective of what this Genesis narrative is all about. Right. right now, one of the things that we've seen in, in, in Genesis narrative, as if you all listen to episode one, like in episode one, we covered who are the characters in Genesis chapter one? Who is speaking? Mm -hmm. It says when, when God says, let us make man. Right? Who exactly? Who exactly was us? And we saw that the us there was God and the wood. Right. Yeah. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, and God and the wood. And so that's why in, in, in John chapter one, which, which is one to five, it says in the beginning was the wood and the wood was made flesh. Sorry. The beginning of the wood and the wood was with God and the wood was God. Mm -hmm. Because God and, God and the wood. And the wood there is in reference to the same spirit of God that we see in Genesis chapter 1. But why is the spirit of God referred to as the wood? That's because as you see, if you go back to Genesis narrative, you see that everything that God says, his wood, which is his spirit, brings it about. Okay. All right. right. That's a place in Genesis. Right. So you see that um, what I what I what I what I would understand there now, and what the listener should should, should, um, should understand is that the word is the spirit of God, and everything that God says, the word is the manifestation of it. Okay, so all right, so the word is the manifestation of everything that God says. Right now. In, in the reflection of the scriptures, one of the things that most people don't know is that Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 mm -hmm. speak about creation, but it's not really... Well, theologians have tried to place that into various contexts, but what they are not aware of, and most people are don't know because they don't really understand the structure of the scripture, is that Genesis chapter 1 is reflected in Genesis chapter 2 in the form of a parallel but a parallel yeah. with specificity. Mm -hmm. Which means, I mean, to, to, to spend time to go into that will take some time. It will be time consuming. But basically, what is actually showing is that what God spoke in Genesis chapter 1, as in, be fruitful, multiply, what he blessed man with, is reflected in Genesis chapter 2 as God breathing the breath of life into the man. Meaning, the breath of life there will be the breath of what God said or on God's blessings. In simple terms, that would be, in other words, Adam, the breath of life contained the blessings that were speak, spoken in Genesis chapter one. So then, what, right, God so blessed, not... yeah, what God blessed him with, in particular, he became the embodiment of that breath. That blessing was breathed into him in the form of God's breath. Nice. So it's not like random ways where God spoke, it's actually. God blessing him was like putting his, in this case, his nature into him. Yeah, his nature into Function. him. And in, in the same way, in, 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 in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit that was given to, to us, even on, in the day of Pentecost, in Galatians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul refers to the Holy Spirit as Abraham's blessings, which means the blessing of Abraham has, has been breathed into the New Covenant saints mm, as the Holy okay. Spirit. All right. right. So, All right. technically, the blessing there 
or what God says is pretty much the mindset of the Spirit of God breathed into you. Right? So when it comes to, 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 to Jesus, we see that Jesus is the Word made flesh. But that actually takes on two components that actually work as one. It is actually in reference to the fact that the Word of God, which is the Spirit of God, became flesh. But it's also John's way of, of actually demonstrating that um, it's John's way of demonstrate of, of actually indicating that that same Spirit of God is the Torah, the Scriptures, what God says, God's Word, written Word, in the flesh also. So it's actually God's Spirit and it and and what God says is His Spirit, and what and His Spirit is is, is what God says that's actually born into flesh. So that's like the Torah in a person. Yes. In a way. Okay. In a way. <laughs> <laughs> right? the, the Torah, the Torah in life, in a life form. Oh, and it's so like the walking Torah. <laughs> the walking Torah. So, um, what or the walking scriptures? That's why Jesus said right. the scriptures about me. You search the, script, the scriptures looking for salvation, but the scriptures are about me. Because he's gotcha. now the living Torah, the living scriptures. And and, and, and um, most people in the Western world don't really understand that. And so when people are baptized, do you know that when you're baptized, you actually it's it's a it's it's a demonstration of you being um as well as, as uh, let's say in, Paul, in, um, in Paul's words, it is actually like a demonstration of your resurrection in Christ, right? Uh -huh. And when you resurrect or when you come out of that water, what you do is that you leave your ego or your who you know yourself to be behind right. and, you, uh -huh. and you rise the word of God in flesh, just like Jesus. So in other words, no, it is not your. It is now incumbent upon you to look at the scriptures to understand who you are. So you mentioned James, something. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you, you leave your ego. Um, just to get a little more insight into that, you're talking about the previous identity, right? Right. The identity. The so the identity that you built for yourself, who you know yourself to be. Okay. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what we would refer to there as the ego, the person who you have learned yourself to be. When you rise from that, you forget that, and you begin to identify yourself as in the name of Christ Yeshua or in the name of Yahweh in Christ Yeshua, Yahweh or Christ Yeshua, because it's, it's the same person now. Mm -hmm. And you look at the scriptures to understand who you are by okay. watching your Father. Does that make sense? making perfect sense yeah so the so in in peter in, in first peter he says that we are the seed of the word of god it's the same thing so we are god's we are we are god's seed meaning a seed is actually defined in genesis as what is actually being used for for for, for something to multiply according according to its kind mm -hmm. so if we are god's seed we see the word of god we are a multiplication we are actually uh, a multiplication of god after god as in god multiplied right. and the world as in the entire scriptures all the blessings of god and the scriptures all god's all of the the, the torah and the scriptures are actually in us this is actually reflected in even in hebrews where it says that he will put the word in your heart ah okay yeah, so the scriptures actually has one theme. And so when we are in Christ, this is not just some abstract Christ in you. It's really the scriptures in you. So God's blessings. You are now the, the live embodiment of God's blessings. So my renewal is pretty much learning to live, to leave your codependent identity and come back to the self-existent identity of the spirit in, in, in you, in your heart. Which so is the scripture you in you. So uh -huh. when you say that we have become um well the scriptures, Jesus identified himself with the scriptures, right? right. And well we on we well Gentiles never under the law. How does that relate to us now? Well Jesus fulfilled the requirements, which actually means that Jesus fulfilled the law 
Mm-hmm. And now, if a covenant is between two persons, then Jesus fulfilled the part that man had to fulfill. And now, it is now God fulfilling his part to Christ Jesus. Okay. So when we look, so when we look at the scriptures, we're looking at all God's blessings that has been breathed into us. That's that's now in the same way he he spoke the blessing in Genesis. Then all of the blessings of the scriptures are now spoken into you as Abraham's blessing via the presence of the Holy Spirit in you. So you don't look for the blessings of God externally. It's now in you. And you're renewing your mind to walk and manifest it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right, so that, that, that's the word made flesh, right? That's the word made flesh. So two contexts that you highlighted. Yeah, so, so Jesus really, um, you notice... Again, he comes back. That is this that's the spirit of God. The word of God is the spirit of God in the Genesis narrative that is referred to as the word. And the word of God there is not the spirit of God is not just a random abstract spirit. It's what God has said. Tell me more about that. <laughs> because we've been told it's an abstract something up in air somewhere. So it's like um and we know that the Hebrew word is Picked, for so example, mm-hmm. say again. No, I said we, we know that the Hebrew authors do not relate to the way the Westerners, um, we Westerners think with abstract thoughts. Like, what is concrete spirit of God in us? Kind of like, okay, so do you remember when Jesus, um, went when Jesus after he resurrected, he blew upon the disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit? Uh huh. When you speak a word. So the con- the context of this is that when you speak a word, when you- when you're speaking, doesn't breath come out of your mouth while you're speaking? Yes, right this, now this, it this is. is <laughs> this is the simplest way to understand it, right? Uh-huh. And breath coming out of you, speaking, right? Yes. Which means the intention of what you speak is coming out of your mouth with breath. Right. So consider it, what your intention is, and. Um, consider that God is power. Uh-huh. El- Elohim, the judge, the one who has the authority. And so what he blesses or what he speaks comes out of him as breath. And whoever it enters, that person becomes what he says become that 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 being's nature. So you're referring to physical well, when I say physical, you're talking about breath, like Literally. Physical breath. Yes, breath. Oh, but that okay. is spirit right. in the scriptures. Breath. Right, right. So then so then you can say that your breath now, the spirit of God is in you. There's a breath of God is in you. Mm-hmm. And that breath is charged with what God blessed you with. It's energetically charged. Right. Taking a deep breath right now. <laughs> 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 yeah. So when 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 you come into Christ, we are learning the mindset of the of the spirit in us god's breath in us his holy spirit that enters you you know the spirit in scriptures actually referred to as wind right so this breath um, inhaling and exhaling has a mind and that's what i'm learning yeah, and that is his spirit and that actually has a mind and the mind of that is what god has said in the scriptures um, in the scripture, all, all of God's blessings breathed into you. That's why John's um, Paul says in Galatians 3 that the Holy Spirit, that's 3.14, that the Holy Spirit is a gift of God, which is Abraham's blessings. So all so, yeah. of the blessings in the Torah, mm-hmm. in, the, in the scriptures, in the Psalms, in the prophets, all of those blessings are now breathed into you. And you are the walking, living embodiment of, of what, has, what God's blessings are. You know, that would make sense why we can go and bless others. Because we have to be a blessing to bless, if that makes sense. Exactly. You can't do what you're not. <laughs> exactly. Everything flows in the in, 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 in the context of, of pneumatology or spirit. Everything flows from your identity. You cannot you cannot heal if you're not a healer. Boom. <laughs> yeah, you you cannot you cannot um you cannot provide if you're not a provider. Everything that God has blessed you with, He's made you, He's made to be your nature, so that you are just like a sun. You shine. 
So you can't be yeah. a you can't give light unless you are light. Just like this. That sun. makes sense. Yeah, that is so awesome. And it's so not abstract. No, it is not. Yeah. So I, I hope this actually gives some context to um the word made flesh, but also more context with regards to the word um, or the sons of God being the seed of the word of God. So really, you, you, you're studying the scriptures to learn more about yourself. Not learn about God, no you learn about yourself. Which is, which is why God, uh, Paul says, imitate God as your father. And you're, you are a seed, you are a, a multiplication after him, after your multiplication after his kind. Therefore, everything that God is, you are now. Everything God has said, yeah. God is. That's the opposite of what we have been taught, though. Like, you know, growing up in the school system, you read history books to find out about your ancestors. And um, what we tend to do is, like, take our identity from that in particular. Right. Right. And what you're saying, that that or what you're referring to in, in the scriptures here and, and the New Testament, is that so the, the same way we would have treated the history books is the same way now or as a matter of fact in the same manner that john is um well is 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 the same manner that we should actually or the same what's the word i'm looking for reverence it's the same reverence we should take with to it now because that's speaking about us exactly not god abstracting exactly. the sky but us so coming back to the, the use to, to, to what we just referred to as like baptism, mm -hmm. what what you do is that you are you are you are um, submerged into the water, and that person that you have thought yourself to be from all of the ancestors and history and all of that. Uh -huh. If God didn't say that, then you leave that behind and you rise the scriptures and you are now you are now the walking the living word with christ oh, okay. yeshua so we are now in the flesh too we are now the word made flesh we are now the oh. word made flesh that is so cool so when we identify ourselves with christ yeshua as is the case with regards to the new covenant requirement believing in the mm -hmm. name is to identify yourself with him um identifying yourself with him his you, you you actually now become the person of Christ Jesus according to Second Corinthians two ten. You become now the person of Christ Yeshua. You are now the Word made flesh, and so the scriptures are pretty much about you, and you're learning how to be more, how to manifest more of you by renewing your mind to what is energetically charged into you. That is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> but for those of you who are hearing this for the first time, feel free to put um in the comment section what are your thoughts on it, what are your questions and stuff like that, and we'll get back to you on it. Yeah, it, it's. I mean, I, I think that should help more saints to walk in the power of God because what you realize is that you are all God's blessings and now your identity. Mm -hmm. You are it. So you don't and need to pray and ask God for it, no? Cannot manifest it. No. You can, I mean, James does say if you think you lack wisdom, you should ask God for it. But it's not really as in your mind, not in your spirit. Right. Got you. Yeah, so now so this brings really, us. It's really the task of bringing your mind into agreement with what is charged into you. I love how you said that to bring it into agreement to what is charging to you. So it's like not, nothing you have to wake up, just nope. just to come into an understanding, like accurate knowledge. What, who am I? Where did I come from? What's what's the purpose of me? You know, right. Christ. Yeah. And now that we identify, okay, we are walking Christ. Now it's like the whole map is there for us to see. You go back into the scriptures, and I was like, what is this guy about? Like, who am I? <laughs> Right, right. And yeah. you will find out everything that it says about you. That is, that is awesome. Yeah, so we are the seed of the word of God. 
So what's the next thing that we want to talk about there, concerning John 1, 14 to 18? His glory. His glory. What is God's what is glory? glory? Yeah. I the glory I've been hearing this word so much in like, I grew up in a denominational church system and it's like glory, glory, hallelujah. We are glory. It's like, what's glory? Like, and what I've been taught again is, is that it's really, really abstract, like nothing tangible. So yeah, I'm sure yeah, the listeners yeah. really excited to hear now what is the glory. Right, right, right. So, so, hit so us. the glory. <laughs> so I, I even came up in the Pentecostal arena and they always refer to the glory of God as something nobody could define it. Yeah, no I don't ever. like that. Those, those who try to define it will say it's God's goodness. It has the glory of God, God's goodness. And what is God's goodness then? And they can't really answer that. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, even though God actually de- ex- expresses his goodness in Exodus when he was speaking to, Mo- to Moses on the mountain. And he, he, he declared his name and then he defined his name. He expressed it. But um, So many people use the glory of God and they want to know, well, the man is filled with God's glory and, and, and all of that. And they, but they don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's just this abstract thing thing that they're referring to that nobody really can put their hands on is like grasping grasping for smoke tell me about it it's been there and done that, that smoke. yeah <laughs> i mean I, I do that for i grew up in, in pentecostalism for 32 years before i actually embarked upon the journey that i embarked upon and then in that we were always searching for the glory of god you know the, and, and i personally in my pentecostalism thought in the glory of god or something some light that would appear Mm-hmm. In my room or, or, or in my residence, the house will be filled with, 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 with a mist. Yeah. And the, the light of God, the light of God will, will fill the place and never happened. I was about to ask you it what, what happened. <laughs> yeah, real real prayers. I mean I prayed like I, I as a as for those of you who know my story, you know, I was one of those who, who tried the eight hours of eight hours a day prayer for about a whole year. Oh man. You know, I with can't. with fasting. <laughs> Yeah, consistent, right through. Going going over and over and the light wouldn't appear. So it's like you know, you're having experiences, some experiences with God, but nothing appearing, nothing going on, nothing nothing going on like that. Mm-hmm. And so only in the I mean in the pneumatological journey that that, that I've been on, then as, as as most of you all know, all of that actually came into context. And so from the ancient Hebrew perspective, the glory of God is paralleled in the Bible. Hold on to your chairs. Uh, holding on. Brace him. Drum roll. Seat belt everything. <laughs> <laughs> drum roll. So, <laughs> so the, 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 the drum roll, eh? Yeah, the drum roll. I can't roll my um, my tongue like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that. I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, the glory of God in the script is is in reference actually to the integrity of god tell me again. That is parallel, <laughs> in parallel with integrity you know, if if you pull up a a, 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 a in challenge i challenge your listeners to to, to 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 do this you can pull up a, a, a search engine about bible search engine on google mm-hmm. and type in glory and integrity and you'll see in one of the in, in a couple of the scriptures, um, in Psalms in particular, also identifies that there's a there's a parallel between God's glory and His integrity. All right, now integrity, you might we may have varying definitions of integrity, but what this, this the scriptures actually define God's integrity as, even in the Psalms, is God's equity. God's equity, meaning that everything that God has spoken is for all. So the, the best way to actually define that that equity of God is pretty much like you know like the laws humanitarian laws, mm-hmm. yeah. No matter what you do, whether you're a criminal or you're a law-abiding citizen, the humanitarian laws apply to all. Right. Everything that God says is is actually seen in the scripture in the same way. So this is why Jesus would walk around publicans and sinners, and heal everybody. Oh. Whether you are a righteous person or you're a publican or you're a sinner, everybody can heal because what God said is for all. Justice. Right? This, what, 
justice, justice and righteousness is couplet just exactly exactly as a matter of fact righteousness is also a parallel in scripture for integrity you can go through scriptures and change righteousness with integrity and you will see that and you and it, notice it says in second corinthians chapter 5 last verse i think it's chapter verse 21 where it says that he became sin so that we become the righteousness of god so the prophet was there yeah the prophet was there actually said that what adam did in the garden of eden by eating from the tree was a was an act of treachery uh -huh. which means a lack of integrity right so sin can cut it pretty much be categorized under the category of in in the bracket of a lack of integrity does that make sense plenty sense. <laughs> right so in, in that in that case he became sin so that you become the integrity of god now that is not not that, that that is not through the lens of the western perspective and we don't have enough time to actually go and break that down into pieces but basically um god's glory is, is his integrity his faithfulness his goodness that's why god's glory is referred to as his goodness because he lives by equity whether you think that you are the worst person on the face of the earth and you don't deserve it it is for all and so to the person who thinks that you don't deserve it or may have done really bad things mm -mm. the equity me simply stands that you still deserve what god says for the entire humankind the so entire no, classific no classification of um what you call it sin in that context that does not qualify you yeah. for the right. integrity so of god in this context you can say that the rain falls on the just and on the unjust the rain here being god's blessings what god has said that rain you can carry back to, to, to isaiah 55 that shows that god's word is like the rain that falls to the ground and what is the soil yeah, that actually causes birth of, of, of um of new seed right what is the seed and, and that provides mm -hmm. more seed for the soil so god's glory here is god's integrity and so when the when the apostle john or the disciple and, and the disciple and apostle john said that we saw his glory what they're actually talking about is that we saw his integrity so wait wait we're having a trooper moment here right let's just <laughs> back it up a moment <laughs> you're telling me and all these listeners according to according to what we're reading in the new testament jesus and i just letting it sink in right jesus mm. as the glory of god was basically just demonstrating or being in the integrity of god so like the glory is not no big light flashing somewhere over him it's just him walking without compromise according to the truth yep dang <laughs> 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 yeah, without 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 compromise that what, what God said was for all. And so that is why Jesus would be speaking to those who were like taking extra tax and telling them stop doing that. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. All of these things, all everything, Jesus is actually the integrity of God in our body, walking around. And, and everything that God says is not for particular men, it's really uh -huh. for the entire species of men. See well, that, that idea rotating. goes back. Go ahead. I was going to say, if you guys not getting excited about this, something is wrong. <laughs> because this is yeah. so relevant to us. Like, so, so let, me, let me let you go ahead before I get so excited and just ramble on. Yeah, so what we actually see is that the scriptures um, use the Genesis narrative as a reference point for its concepts. And in Genesis narrative, no one or no creature is separated among its species so what god said about the horse or what adam which is yahweh in flesh in dust said about the horse applies to all horses mm -hmm. what he says about the trees applies to all trees that's why all trees produce seed unless i mean they produce seed in different ways um some 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 um some may not produce seed well those are, 
actually not made for food may, may not produce seed but they actually grow in the same way what god said about the earth applies to all the earth what god says about the heavens applies to all the heavens and the same way what god said about man applies to all men and why right. when adam did what he did the entire race was affected by what he did right right so is it nothing special for one person is like standard across the board exactly so in in, in in jesus what you see is what god says is that what what god what what um everything that god says applies to all men and so jesus did not make differentiation between whether you are a righteous person or you are unrighteous person according to the context of the law god's goodness god's blessings what god has said and blessed mankind with is really for all men so he was amongst everyone <laughs> and that's why it's, it's, it's so um, true that's, that's why the, the pharisees the religious were very much angered by this because they stood in the seat of determining who was was worthy of this and who was not worthy of that so they're kind of like measuring people by this so-called sins because they wanted the law so it's like right. trying to figure out well you know you stole mangoes last week i don't really think you should get healing for that so it's like they would right. they were right. judging like you had to fill out a google form to see if you qualify to get healed with them right and so with with jesus what we see is it says in the following in the same excerpt that you read there what we see is that it says that um through jesus came grace and truth that grace of god is god's integrity and truth integrity to that truth mm -hmm. right so is... for... hmm? mm -hmm. no uh, well, so what i'm saying is that for for those who are hearing this for the first time i hope this brings some context into what god's glory is um, and know that you are sons of glory. That's what it means. You are the sons of the integrity of God, the, the light of God. Right? The glory of God is the light of God also in scriptures. So it says right. light arises in the darkness. It's because the integrity of God arises in the lack of integrity. Paul refers, Paul refers to that as shining light among the secret among in, in in the dark places where things are not where, where people are living in a lack of integrity you are the embodiment of god's integrity and so you shed so, light so that's how and you free. demonstrate glory yes ma'am listen in psalm 17 15 <laughs> right in, it's in psalm 17 15 it literally says this is written in psalm 17 15 that he, he says, that, let me pull it up and quote it directly. I will not mm -hmm. paraphrase it so that persons can see that this is in your Bible. Right. Right. To be in the likeness of God is referred to be walking in the integrity of God in Psalm 17 15. You ever just said it? To be in the likeness of God is to walk in the integrity of God. So if you go to Psalm 17 15, this is what it says. As the last verse in the psalm it says, As for me, I shall see your face in righteousness. So let's change righteousness there, which is parallel in scripture. You can check that out. Just type in integrity and righteousness, and you would see how it is parallel in scripture as couplets. It says, As for me, I will see your face in integrity, which is righteousness. I will be fully satisfied when I awake to find myself seeing your likeness. So to be in the likeness of God is to be in the integrity of God. So God's Ooh. glory here is very simple. It is not abstract. It's not this imaginary light. The integrity of God may be revealed in different ways, in different elements, like, like the smoke and the mist and the um, light shining. Um, even the clouds that walk them through the wilderness, the light that shine, shone by night, you notice that those things were present despite their rebellious nature, their rebellious yeah. hearts. That's actually a representation of God's integrity. Not so he's, he, right, he, 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 is, he is 
he is um he lives by the integrity of what he says it is not based on what you do and so christ yeshua now died and this is actually where this is going to rub a lot of believer um a lot of religious minds wrong because what christ did was did for the entire species that's why paul says when one died one died all, all died. died yeah and paul also says that all every man the world was reconciled to god by the blood by the body of jesus on the cross which means everyone benefited from that nobody is in sin but the blood of jesus covered everybody's sin hold on Once let me hear this all. again nobody <laughs> is in what what did you say <laughs> what what you can do uh, actually do th- is actually so um so seeds that you're going to reap and if you see and if you so seeds of the spirit you'll reap that and if you so seeds of the flesh you'll reap that ruin and destruction yeah, on one side and life and peace on the other mm-hmm. yeah but even second uh, Corinthians chapter five it actually says that all um that god cancel all sins everybody's benefiting from that as a species this yeah, is not specific read. to any or, or separated or conditional to everybody see might just read things um so it just basically you can look at it as advantages and disadvantages so like yeah, so exactly. fresh, that's disadvantages to your body don't do that <laughs> don't do that you're, you're just, yeah, just gonna read it i mean right? but when it comes to the, it. <laughs> but when it comes to the divine approval through the blood of jesus everybody's divinely approved that is the gospel to go and tell people be reconciled to god according to second corinthians chapter 5 because god has reconciled you to him already that's the gospel boom that's the gospel <laughs> and photo all right guys <laughs> so if this um if you guys want to hear this brings us to the end of the, the talk, right, Zane? Today's reboot yeah, your biblical definitely. perspective. All right. So, so if you guys um, with regards to the word made flesh, reboot that perspective. With regards to the glory, reboot that perspective. The integrity of God is in you. And all you're doing is actually lining up your mind to align with the energetic integrity of what is already in you. Breathe right. In. So if breathe, breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> Woosa. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so if um, for those of you, this is the fourth um, episode of Rebooting Biblical Perspective. After this episode, you know, we only have one more b- free beta episode. After that, all episodes after episode five will be specific to our Patreon, um, to our patrons on Patreon. Um, you can f- you can actually follow me where this this podcast, the rest of this podcast series, will be made available on Patreon. You can follow me on www.patreon.com slash zen z-a-n-e underscore l-e-l underscore fuego f-u-e-g-o right for those of you using the patreon app you will need to access my profile via that link above the video above this above this feed you need to access it on your browser first via the link to be able to then access it on your app on your phone all right um and for those of you who would like to get to know a little more of what kelly and i also do under the, in the, in the international institute of pneumatology you can you can um you can search www.internationalinstituteofpneumatology.com and subscribe don't forget to hit the subscribe button subscribe. on youtube and our website so you can be the first to know what's up you can get updates we're going to send you emails or newsletters lots of good stuff don't forget to hit the subscribe button all right so on that note we have come to the end of our time blessings and much love plenty love guys love you all <laughs>